If reading other people's code is important to you, it is critical that you learn this technique or you'll end up pulling your hair out. Fortunately, there's an easy fix. Want to read code like a professional? Let me show you what I'm doing to fast track my development for you. Why should you read code in the first place? Why should you read other people's code in the first place? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward. When you read other people's code, then you will learn. Then you know how other people built that code. You are taking a look at architecture, code syntax, uh, ways of solving problems. You definitely want to read other people's code. Of course, go ahead and check out open source projects for this. And it's a great source of learning while you take a look at other solutions for commonly known problems. So that is why you definitely want to read code. Now, how to read code is a whole lot another question. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of answers here and I'm going to give you my own, what I found to be the best for myself. Take this with a grain of salt. I've done this for hundreds of hours and it worked for me. So what do we want to do when we are reading code? I have prepared here an Xcode project. Of course, this is mine, but let's say uh, you encounter this Xcode project. You want to take a look at it and you want to understand it. Basically, that's the whole purpose of reading other people's code to understand and afterwards just learn uh, some new stuff if there is anything to learn from it. It could be bad experience also, like what to avoid and also good practices. Now, if I take a look at this project, you will see that it's a straight simple project. Uh, it's a license key generator app. So uh, good naming convention here. We are going to generate some license key. That's great. And uh, it's a Swift UI app because I can see right over here the view. So I kind of framing myself, uh, knowing uh, which part of my knowledge I have to use. And here is our content view. Uh, it's not much. Uh, it's really uh, a short one. And then we have our app right over here. It uses the content view. Great. Under the info, we added the application scene manifest. This is, I know, uh, just for adding, uh, so removing that uh, yeah, pesky uh, console log uh, uh, warning. Um, I have a separate YouTube uh, video about this. I will make sure that I link that in the description. So uh, what do we have here? We have some also assets. And this looks like a really straightforward application. Of course, if you are taking a look at a more complex uh, uh, project, then you know you you will have more time to kind of have an overview. It. This is the main point here. I get an overview. Now, uh, next up, I want to understand the code. Now, how do I understand the code? Now, there are several uh, ways to uh, tackle this. You could just start off and take a look at all the files, or you could just uh, see, okay, these are the views. This is a Swift UI application. So you want to take the views and maybe some view models or the models itself. If you are in a core data app, you want to take a look at the model there, but basically uh, you want to scan the whole project. That's one way of doing it. Now, what I recommend, and this is much more advanced, but uh, yeah, it's, it's much more powerful in you understanding the code is to actually build and run it. It's as simple as that. If you want to take a look at all the files, then you will have to have a mental map of what the project does. And you have to kind of imagine and store all of the quirkiness, the, the details, the functionality in that mental map, which is really hard to do. What I recommend is building, running the application and understanding it as you use it. So what I'm going to do is what I preach, I'm going to just build and run it. And there we go. We have our application. So now you know what this project does. You know how this app looks like. You can see it generated as I can see it right over here, generated a random string and we can just copy it out. That's fine. And we can also generate a new one. And uh, what gives is just going to generate a new random string right over here, which we can use as a license key. Okay, now I understand the purpose and kind of the, the actions, the interactions, what the uh, app has. Okay, so that's one 
part of building and running. You see the code uh, on your device. If you want to hang out with SwiftUI developers just like you, make sure to check out SwiftUI Nation, the community I have just launched. Join over 25 SwiftUI maniacs, ask questions on the private Discord server, attend the weekly group coaching, and level up your SwiftUI skills. Be a part of the SwiftUI Nation. Join us today at store.rebeloper.com slash community. Now the second part, and this is the, the most important part, by the way, but this is the most interesting part also, is understanding the code. Okay, now you have a rough idea what the application does. Now you want to understand the code. And... Uh, what do we do when we try to understand something or try to debug something? Well, we add in print statements. So that is kind of the first to go way of uh, understanding the code. So I will just take a look at this file and let's see. I will just add in here. Maybe we have this create license key. Okay, so I want to know where this is uh, triggered on the UI so I can better understand when this function appears. You are going to, uh, when this function is used, you are going to have this uh, kind of uh, pattern like when is this function triggered quite a lot. So what I'm going to do here is just, maybe just print out our random key because I can see that we are creating here a random string from those characters. Okay, so I'm going to print out that random key. Let's again, build and run. So now you are not just taking a look at the simulator or you know the device, you're also inspecting the code. So as you can see here, we just added our, uh, we, you know, on the console, we have this right over here, random key. Great. Okay, so this is also uh, created when this uh, the app appears. Great. So what if I copy? Nothing happens, but what if I generate? Yeah, we just generated a new one and it's been printed out. And now you get a little bit more information about how this code is built. And yeah, this is how you read code. Now, if you want to, you can just uh, right click on that function and jump to definition. I do this quite a lot. Uh, or, uh, you know, uh, right over here, we are at definition, but if I hit uh, Com uh, select everything, command C, command F, and command V, you know, C, F, V. Uh, and then you can just skip through all of the appearances of this create license key. Okay, as you can see, I have one on the button itself, on the generate button, and then I have also one on the unappear, and then, of course, on the uh, uh, function itself. So if I would just be right over here and I want to jump to definition, actually this is the way what, how you want to jump to definition. Okay, that's fine. But uh, you know, print statements, they are kind of, you know, littering our code. So instead of using print statements, I would recommend using breakpoints. Yes, you want to use breakpoints. I know they kind of sound really scary, but believe me, they are not. So what I'm going to do is just stop this and uh, let me just have a little bit more real estate for the code. And what I want to do is, you see right over here, we have some numbers. So I want to, again, get access to that random key that we have created. So uh, that is created on line 46. So uh, when I'm returning it right over here, yeah, and I accidentally already added a breakpoint right over here, on line seven, uh, 97, I'm going to add a breakpoint by just clicking on that number. You can see, I just added it. If you want to pause that breakpoint, you just click on it again, uh, make it available again, click on it again. Now, what are breakpoints? Well, breakpoints are going to break your codes running. So it's going to, going to pause the uh, running of your code. So let's just build and run and see what this does, okay? So yes, this is uh, what we are here. So it says breakpoint 1.1, occurrence, uh, under, under parentheses, it will be just the occurrence of the breakpoint, how many times uh, you are going to go through it. And um, yeah, there it is. Uh, Good thing here is that you can take a look at the snapshot of the current code, you know, the project uh, state. So you can just go right over here. This has been created under the on appear. Also, yeah, these are kind of uh, gibberish, but you know, you are going to start with main and then we are in this on appear closure. And then this is where we break. So 
you can just go through by uh, clicking by the way llbd is uh, uh, low level debugging so that's what that means and uh, you want to make sure that this is actually open right over here so we make sure that you toggle all of these uh, right over here okay so uh, if you want to move forward so your application will actually uh, uh, proceed uh, if I and if I just go to the simulator you see it's just the blank screen right over here so if you want to proceed you just uh, click on here and it's just going to go through it again so it just I don't know it didn't skip but it went uh, forward so now if I click on generate again that chunk of code will again be uh, uh, executed therefore we are going to break again on line 47 and as you can see now the count is up to two so breakpoint 1.1 1. 1 and 2 okay and um, again you may take a look at the stack trace right over here now this is really nice because uh, you can just pause a lot of things in your code and when you pause you can take a look at the stack trace and try to figure out okay this is what I'm doing this is the code that it's running at this point and you try to figure out put um, uh, the map uh, in your head of what's actually happening now this is great but there's a lot more to breakpoints so let me just stop this and by the way you can just remove it by either uh, uh, <laughs> um, moving it outside onto the uh, area of code or you can just uh, move it up and down wherever you'd like which is really really nice and this moving uh, between the lines can also be uh, done while you are testing it so it's really really powerful so let's edit this breakpoint because now we just you know you just broke uh, so you're not you just break uh, the code at that specific line you just paused it and you want to do a little bit more so let's just right click on it and edit breakpoint select edit breakpoint and this will pop up and there are a few conditions or you know a few options that you can add right over here first of all you can just add a name to it so let's just add in here random key or something like that you can also have a condition uh, you can just have like I don't know if this is a for loop you want maybe you want to say I modulo 10 equals 0 so on every tenth of that for iteration on the I this will be executed otherwise it will be ignored uh, and also you can just ignore the first n times before stopping now the powerful part here is actions so let's just add an action right over here we can just add a log message and I would just say hello breakpoint okay so uh, there we go that's enough and as you can see we just added an arrow right over here that means that uh, we have an action on that breakpoint so let's just build and run it has succeeded and as you can see hello breakpoint has been printed out which is much more informative and of course uh, if we just uh, move forward and uh, click on generate again it will say hello breakpoint again so that's great but uh, maybe I don't really want to stop and then do it again and I just want to know okay I just went through this breakpoint so again if I just right click and edit breakpoint or by the way you can just uh, take a look at all of your breakpoints right over here and then you just right click on it and edit breakpoint uh, you can just add uh, some more interesting stuff besides just hello breakpoint and here are the expression breakpoint name and breakpoint hit point so let's just go ahead and create one of my favorite uh, log messages for the breakpoints it uses all of them by the way so what I want to add first is my breakpoint name so um, that's the the B and then I want to add in the breakpoint hit count so just like that and then an arrow of what happened and I'm going to add in here I don't know a random key or just generated generated and what I'm going to do is use that random key to be printed out so I'm going to use that expression so to add signs and add the expression in here so random 
key. Of course, here we are not going to have the auto completion that the print statement has, but still uh, really, really nice. Okay, so uh, let's click away and then build and run again. And let's see what are we going to be printed out right over here. So you see, we have create license key, which is the actual functions name where this breakpoint lives in, really nice. And then we have in parentheses, the count number. Currently it's one. And then the message generated and that random key, which is really nice. So let's move forward. Let's click on right over here. Let's click on generate. So we have our second hit count and, uh, you know, again, generated and that random key. Now, as I told you, sometimes you don't want to uh, click on, okay, just skip this, you know, this button. Uh, you don't want to continue to the program to execute as it stays right over here. So for that, we can, uh, yeah, we can just do that really simply. Just uh, edit the breakpoint again, and then under options, automatically continue after evaluate, evaluating actions. Just check that. And by the way, you can just make this a little bit longer so we have the random key. And uh, let's just build and run. And there we go. Uh, now we can just generate a new one. And let's see the logs. There we go. Create license key one, create license key two. There it is. Now, the cool part here is that if you have print statements, then you have to maybe search for all the print statements and then uh, delete them before you go to uh, release uh, uh, archive. Uh, now you don't have to do anything inside your Xcode project because you know there are no print statements. They are not going to litter your code. They are not going to be executed in release. All you have to do, if you choose to, you can just click over here and kind of pause this, or you can just remove it, delete the breakpoint if you want to. That's it's as easy as that. And also you can just filter the breakpoints if you want to. You can create new breakpoints. It's really, really powerful. And with this uh, technique, with the breakpoints, you will be able to read other people's code while you are running them really, really uh, powerfully. And also you are going to learn quite a lot with this technique. Creating these breakpoints will definitely make you a pro. And if you want to check out what's the difference between a hobby and a pro developer, go ahead and check out this video right over here.